What's happening everybody? I'm Steve and welcome back to Junk Drummer TV where on this video series I give my reactions, my analysis and my hot takes on the drummers of today and yesterday and maybe tomorrow if I stick around that long. I am a professional drum teacher and a gigging musician and I have been for the last 20 plus years. Actually it's like 23 now. I think it's 23. Today's episode is going to be a unique perspective I think because this is the first time that I've done a video where I not only know the drummer, I worship him, and two of his records that he recorded in the past are gigantic influences on me, but I don't really know his work from the band that we're going to play now that I know is, a, is kind of a completely different setup, a completely different genre. John Stainier. Also, this is a big one uh, from the comment section. I've been getting asked about him for a long time, and I knew I'd do this eventually. You know, we're not doing as many React videos as we used to back here around on Junk Drummer TV. In the meantime, and Betty are fucking masterpieces. I love John Stainier. I've been listening to him for probably about as long as I've been playing drums. In the meantime came out, like what, 93? Something like that, in that vicinity. I graduated high school in 95, and that's when I started playing gigs. It was my senior year of high school. John Stainier is, I think underrated helmet was one of those bands that flew underneath the radar they were just big enough to be a national international worldwide act but i never thought that they got their just desserts i think that they are a groundbreaking band i think a lot of bands and a lot of genres that came after helmet would call helmet a huge influence on them. Now, let's get right to this video. This is John Stainier playing with Battles. Now, I am vaguely aware of Battles. Because I love James, John Stainier so much, I do kind of keep an eye on him on anything that he's doing, but I'm not very, uh, I'm not real uh, familiar with this band at all. I know they're instrumental, and I know that he has that crash cymbal way high, if you ever talk to Battles fans, and I have a few friends who are, they always talk about that fucking symbol up in the air. We're going to look at that today. Uh, let's get into it. Uh, before I get into it, and if you like what I'm doing and you think I deserve it, please give me a double tap on that subscription and the notification bell. Give me a like, a comment, and share. If you really dig what I'm doing, go check out my Patreon. Go check out my merch table. Let's check out one of my personal drum heroes and someone who played on a record that is probably going to be in the top 10 records of all time for me video that's coming up soon John Stainier with Battles And I have heard a few uh, Battles tracks. There's that one video where they're like riding down the road on skateboards. I've heard that song. It's not skateboards. John Stainier's just being himself. He's still John Stainier. That, like, he's like a violent, precise drummer. There's something like just, just militant about his groove like his groove just kind of like screams like you have no other fucking choice but to groove with me it's so assertive you're not going to see a lot of drum fills you may not see a drum fill on this but you're going to see assertiveness you can tell right off the bat it's so funny to hear john stain here with battles because he's still just playing like he did with helmet but not playing, you know, what alternative metal and doing whatever you call this. Comment section. I know you a lot of you battles fans are gonna see this. What is this genre? Now I uh, always support 
instrumental music, especially non-jazz instrumental music, because the metal band I mentioned uh, earlier is an instrumental stoner metal band. And uh, to, to get the kind of fan base that Battles does without lyrics, kind of like how, well, not kind of, exactly like how Don Caballero did it, it's working uphill, man, to be able to get success and not be, you know, like your funk fusion jazz music that most of the time doesn't have lyrics. I know jazz fans, there's jazz vocalists, but you know what I mean? You have to be extra good. You got to be, you got to put a lot of butter on the popcorn to get people to dig you without having what I think is the, the, the most important uh, tone from a band because it's the thing that, that I think connects your fans with you more than anything, and that is the vocals, guitar players. I know you think it's you. It's the vocalists. But, like, they're playing a gigantic festival. I know this is an old video. It's from, like, 2011. But the fact that they're, and they are playing during the day, but the fact that they are were able to uh, get success to be able to play on such a level man you have to be you have to be extra good you have to be extra great man it's just what I think what we'll be able to take away from John Stanier today is your touch, the way that you address the instrument, the way that you make a sound on an acoustic drum set. Uh, touch is such a difficult thing to discuss and explain because it's almost, it, it, the idea is abstract, but the results are concrete. When someone says touch, like the touch on an instrument, and this goes for any instrument, Guitar players talk about their touch on the instrument a lot. The way that your body is, the way that your physiology is, is, is set up, plus the technique that you play with, and the way that you move the drumstick and impact the, 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 the drum head, it's almost like a fingerprint. I've said this before in lessons. I could sign, I could line up 10 students playing the same exact groove at the same exact tempo, and that groove will sound 10 different ways. It'll feel 10 different ways based on their, their touch and their time feel, which is a whole different thing. John Stanier has the touch of like, like if you were like John Henry but uber musical and super mega precise. That's the best way that I can describe John Stanier. We're gonna talk about his posture here in a minute. Yeah, man, just the way that he's playing those perfect eighth notes. You know, a lot of times, uh, you know, on the hi-hat, we'll put, you know, like an accent on the hi-hat or, you know, try to play straight, uh, you know, just uh, all t all accents or no, no taps. Uh, the way that he's digging in with the, the shoulder of his drumstick on the kind of the extreme edge of the hi-hat and getting that ch -ch -ch sound. And just, it's just like, I'm having a, like, it's like... It's like a pneumatic drill. It's so powerful. He's one of the most powerful drummers ever. With instrumental music that's that's kind of uh, abstract, like we're listening to, if you really listen strongly, there's some real solid, just straight parts. Like we've heard, you know, like three or four different 
sections that are unique to themselves. So I think a lot of people, when they hear instrumental music and they don't have that vocal to ground them, uh, they can just kind of get lost in it especially find that with people who uh, never listen to jazz or not jazz fans when they hear that for the first time. If you go back and listen to this, and please, like I say, with all of my videos, watch my video with my nonsense over top of it and then go back and listen to it without. So hopefully you can get what I'm talking about better. I know I've stopped a lot in this. I have a lot of things to say about John Stainer because he is awesome and I love him. If you go back, like you can tell from his ride part that it is custom made or bespoke for my uh, English fans for that section. So you can follow, listening to his drum part makes it even easier to follow the progress and the uh, composition of this song. And, and even though it's an instrumental, it's very much a song. Seems like we're coming to a big rising crescendo. One thing, uh, because, you know, we like to always try to get one kind of educational nugget out of one of these videos. Uh, unfortunately for John Stanier, one of the things that I would make sure to not suggest to younger drummers, beginners, intermediates, don't use his posture. His posture's terrible. And I bet you that if I ever got John Stanier on my interview channel or my interview uh, series, which is called Know Your Role, Got seven or eight episodes up. Please go check that out. It's on a playlist. I bet you he would probably tell us he's had back problems over the years. You know, this man's been playing drums for decades, and that slouch is so bad for you. That's the only thing I can ever say wrong about John Stanier is, like, it's, it's, it works for him, and it doesn't affect the way his play, he plays. I'm more talking about, like, how you feel afterwards. Like, the way he slouches doesn't affect the way he plays, obviously, because, again, he's, I think he's one of the greatest underrated drummers of all time. Listen in the meantime. It's fucking, it's, it's a masterpiece. But I'm talking about after the gig, on the ride home, or on the ride to the next gig, man, your back's going to be fucking hurt if you slouch like he does. And if you can notice, he's playing with the butt ends of his drumsticks, which means he's getting no bounce off of anything that he's playing. He's having to muscle all of that. John staying here, man. We didn't see a we didn't see a drum fill, and I'm glad. Because what he's doing there, and I and I, lo I do a lot of videos that are that are not drum Olympians, and that's kind of by design, because I think drum Olympians are interesting and awesome. But for me, this is the kind of drumming that I like. What we saw today was John Stainier still being himself after all these years. John Stainier still feels like himself. He didn't change his style of playing to fit this band. It's almost like the band was like, okay, we're going to build this band around John Stainier's groove. Because it's very, it's signature. His groove is so signature. I'm so glad I'm doing this video. The thing about, I think you can take from John Stainier, again, from another educational standpoint, is developing your time. Are you going to be a big, heavy, muscular hitter like him? Are you going to be a light tippy tapper? Are you going to be somewhere in between? Are you going to have a, a jazz, a little more lighter jazz approach to the drums? Are you going to have a more feel rud, trying to hit the snare drum and hit the earth at the same time type playing? And whatever works for you and whatever you, whatever you like, whatever makes you feel good inside, that's what you should do. John Stanier has a touch where, like, if he went and played on cardboard boxes, it would still sound like that. And that's a special, special gift when you have a good touch on your instrument. Stevie Ray Vaughan comes to mind. Stevie Ray Vaughan could pick up a guitar with eights on it and it would still sound like Stevie Ray Vaughan. John Stainier would play any drum set and you would know, holy shit, John Stainier's here. So uh, there you go. Um, 
I enjoyed that. I know that was kind of a short clip, and I know this is an older clip. I know that I think that they're not a three-piece anymore. Uh, I love that. That might be the best thing that I've heard from Battles. And I can, I, there's a handful of things that I've listened to over the years. Battles fans, I know there's just so much music to listen to. I can't get to it all. Uh, but I tell you what, after seeing that, after like watching him play again after all these years, uh, I need to probably listen to more battles. I'm going to see Helmet in a couple weeks, weeks or months. I can't remember. Uh, they're coming to the college town I used to live in. And it, I guarantee you that I will be saying all night, this ain't the same because John Stainier ain't in it. And it isn't like they haven't had great drummers. I think John Tempesta was in, was in Helmet for a while. And I love Paige Hamilton. But a big part of what made Helmet uh, such a big band in my life was this man right here. So I uh, hope you all dig all, digged, digged, digged all of that. Dug all of that. Uh, if you like what I'm doing and you think I deserve it, I really need the help on battling the algorithm. It is kicking my ass and has for like a year now. I appeased it for a long time and I have somehow angered it. So you can help me out by giving me a double tap on the subscription and the notification bell. Give me a like, a comment, and share. Uh, Patreon, uh, fucking merch table. But more important than all that, go develop your touch on your instrument. Don't just think about the notes that you're playing. Think about the sound that you're making as well. And keep practicing until it's easy.